Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about an article that uh, was popular just a year or two before I jumped onto YouTube, and I really wish it's one of those things that would recirculate again today. Uh, and that was Martin Birkin's Fuck Around Itis article. Uh, because honestly, at the time that it hit the online fitness world, I think it was in a lot of ways, uh, you know, kind of revolutionary. And I, it, it caused some short-term major changes uh, that didn't really fully stick around because of the way things work in waves in this community. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about this. What I like about Martin, uh, I don't always agree with everything the guy said, but you don't have to agree with everything someone says to appreciate uh, their work and what they did. Um, and I mean, Martin's still out there doing his thing. It's not like he's gone away. Uh, but, you know, because he brought a lot of balance back at things. People in the fitness world, they tend to go from extremes back and forth. They teeter-totter on extremes. And sometimes you need people to come in and say, hey, uh, your extreme is just one tool in the toolbox. Like he did in a couple of ways. You know, he did that with uh, several aspects of all of this. He did it with several aspects of training. And the biggest one of which uh, was obviously the diet end of things. The diet end of things but he also did it with training in because on the diet end, he's one of these guys who stepped back and said look all you guys talking about needing six meals a day all this pre-workout post-workout everything else you're, you're full of crap you guys can recomposition on intermittent fasting if you want and that's what he had people do and i may not be the biggest fan of intermittent fasting in the world i don't think it's perfect but i'll be damned if it didn't work he got a ton of guys into shape and what's crazy is that he got them in, into shape using an unorthodox diet method that went against the grain of everything everyone else out there was doing is the current trend. And he did it with a training style that went against the trend again. Uh, because it seems like in the online training world or bodybuilding world and all of that, not necessarily the athletic training world, um, but in kind of a little mainstream, which is funny that we're calling it mainstream because it's a niche culture anyways, mainstream of a niche culture, kind of in the bodybuilding genre or, or general fitness online things go in these waves of high volume training low volume training back and forth and it seems like high volume training is the norm and every few years is like a one year fad towards low volume training uh, martin kind of kicked that fad back in i personally uh, don't think either one is totally correct uh, it's kind of funny because when you advocate one or try to bring balance people will say that you're oh you're just promoting minimalist training all the time and low volume no i'm not I've done plenty of high volume training on camera for you guys in the past, uh, particularly off season peaking for or before peaking for powerlifting meets. I used to do 30 sets sometimes with some of my main exercises per week. Yeah, 30 sets of bench, 30 sets of squats. Uh, but that's what I did. But you know, the thing is, Martin brought some balance back with his fuck around itis article, and it was because we were all point again where everyone was all about high volume training, high volume training, 15 sets, 20 sets, 30 sets per muscle group per week. And Martin came in and said that, you know, his article was basically, I see weak people. I see weak people in gyms everywhere. And, you know, Martin kind of had the right to talk because the guy kind of had that aesthetic physique everyone wants. He was technically a model by trade uh, and a coach uh, and a trainer uh, as a side thing. But he was really, it was a, it's a Swedish model, basically. <laughs> uh but he's really strong and the guy stays really lean. And a lot of that has to do with his diet, but he was advocating minimalist training. And he's like, look, you guys come in and you do all this. You come in and you fuck around with endless sets of exercises. And his point was that if you can come in and train for an hour straight and, and with very minimal breaks in there, that you are basically fucking around in the gym. You're not doing any real work. Because if you were doing any real work, you would be so exhausted before you got to the hour mark that you couldn't lift a five pound dumbbell anymore. Uh, or you would not, not be able to recover. And he had people come in doing like 30 minute workouts three times a week, focusing on what? Getting stronger. Why? What was the point that he made? He's like, okay, you can come in and do, you know, 15 sets of bicep curls if you want. That's fine. But he goes, you show me a guy who can uh, do chin ups for reps, full range of motion chin ups for reps with at least 50% of his body weight hanging off of a plate below him. Show me that guy and show me what size his biceps are. Show me a guy who can overhead press 
uh, his own body weight for reps. Show me a guy who can bench press one and a half times his body weight for a couple rep for reps. Show me a guy who can deadlift two and a half times his body weight. Show me how many of those guys are small. And he always did multipliers of body weight, which I think was interesting. Because a lot of people would be like, well, you shouldn't be doing that. We know Wilkes scores don't work that way in powerlifting. But his point was that if you're holding too much body weight, you're either fat or you're on a ton of steroids. And he's right. I mean, he is right, basically. Uh, if your BMI is outside the normal range, that's not from lifting weights, guys. Every expert in exercise science will look at that and tell you the same thing. If you're outside of the normal BMI range, it's not from weightlifting. It's because you're using drugs to build your to build muscle, or you have too much body fat, or both. So he was always about people staying lean. So that's why he cared about multipliers of body weight. Because you know what? It's easier to get to that multiplier of your body weight if you're 10% body fat instead of 20. And that was his point. Um, that's why he worked off those. But he's right. Show me a guy who can do chin-ups with 50% of their body weight hanging off of the chain from a dead hang who has tiny biceps. You don't. Same thing with the overhead pressing and the bench pressing numbers you gave. Most of those guys have pretty good arm development. And his point was that people who get strong on basic lifts, and his basic lifts were the squat, the bench press, the deadlift, uh, the overhead press, and the weighted chin-up. that they're going to be well-developed. They're going to have a lot of muscle. They're not going to have any small muscles on their body if they get really strong on those five exercises. That was his point. Uh, you know, it's interesting enough, there's a, another YouTuber out there, the golden one, who kind of says the same thing. Also Swedish. Maybe it's a Swedish thing. Swedes seem to love these five lifts. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, hell, even the golden one has, has kind of said the same thing. Same thing, a Swedish dude <laughs> with a pretty impressive physique who is no slouch on the strength department. Uh, again, kind of seeing a pattern there. Now, people could argue maybe it's a genetic thing, all these Swedish guys. Well, maybe it is, but, you know, all those guys who are strong that I know of, because I've lived in Europe and I've seen different groups of trainers and stuff, I'm just saying all those guys who are strong on those lifts, uh, they're never underdeveloped anywhere. And, you know, and he, he raises a valid point. Because the reality is, if you come in and, yeah, you can do five reps of chin-ups with uh, that much of your body weight, your body weight plus that much extra weight. Let's say you weigh 180 pounds. You could add 90 pounds in weights and do four or five chin-ups, dead hang chin-ups with that. You're not going to have small arms. You overhead press your body weight for reps and bench press one and a half times your body weight for reps, you're not going to have small triceps not in proportion to the rest of your body and that's the point we're making there you're not going to be disproportionate because those muscles are all heavily used and that is the real thing is that he was having people focus on getting really brutally strong on the basics to get bigger and then having their diet be the method by which they get leaner not necessarily coming in and doing tons of activity. He had them regulate it with diet. And you know, that actually works. Um, that actually does work. Hey, I'm all for creating deficits through doing large amounts of activity. Because someone like me who loves to eat, that's fantastic. I would much rather do more activity, do more cardio, more activity, and uh, eat more. But, you know, Martin had people go the other direction. You have them do intermittent fasting so they'd eat less, and as long as they got enough protein in and they got just enough calories and nutrition to gain muscle, they'd still gain muscle. Didn't really have people bulk. Just had them get strong on the basics, and, and there's some truth to that. If you're a drug-free guy and you get really strong on those basic exercises, and you don't really bulk, but you at least get enough calories and enough protein and enough nutrition and rest to gain muscle, you're probably gonna reach your natty limit. You're gonna get about as big as you can possibly get natural. Just get really strong on those basics. And you know, his basics that he introduced hit all the bases. Um, that covers all the bases. There's no muscle in the body left out of those five exercises because they hit every muscle in the body directly and heavily. Nothing gets left out. You know, and that's the reality. You don't have to specifically isolate your upper, outer, inner pecs to get a big chest. 
you do something, anything big, basic lift for the, the lower chest and the upper chest, it's going to grow. And yeah, overhead pressing does work the upper chest if you do the full range of motion. Bench press does build your chest if you pull your scapula together and touch your chest. Triceps, biceps get worked on all those. All the heads of the delts, all three heads of the delt actually get pretty effectively worked between those exercises. And the deadlift will finish off anything that gets left out. But you know, people forget this, and that's one of the things that I appreciate about Martin. I don't think that his training volumes are necessarily ideal. I would like to see people do a bit more volume than what he advocated, but you know what? I'll be damned if guys didn't put on size and get bigger following his program. Plenty of guys did. Plenty of people ran it. Plenty of people got results. It worked. But the thing is, it worked doing a third of the training, about a third of the gym time that a lot of guys out there are pushing programs out there doing, saying, you got to do this to go, really? All he had people do was come in <laughs> and do each of these basic exercises really heavy once a week and just do a quick drop set and get out. Like they're coming in doing two exercises every time they train and we're in and out, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Guys are getting bigger. Uh, there's something to be said for that, you know. I Even though I'd like to see a little more volume and frequency than that, um, plenty of people got results doing it. Proof is in the pudding. Uh, but that he is right. And in his opinion, high volume training is fucking around. It's fuck around itis. That's what he called it. People are coming in, spending endless hours in the gym, just chasing a pump, pumping and pumping away, huffing, puffing. Instead of just focusing on the basics, which will give them 80 to 90% of their results. And the difference is a lot of these guys who went over to his programs were because they weren't getting the results on the other stuff. You know why? It's not because high volume training doesn't work. It's because they were never focusing on the basics. They were only focusing on the volume in and the fluff and the pump without never hitting the basics. You can't take the basics away. You take the basics away, if you want to gain muscle, you're going to need to be on a shitload of drugs because it's not going to work otherwise. You have to always have the basics there. You always have the option to build upon them, but when you remove them, you also remove your gains and your progress as a general rule, unless you replace those basics with a bunch of drugs. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.